Welcome to the Toffee Blues, your source for all things Everton. Uh, we're here to bring you, me and Ben today, you're right. We're all here right. to bring you the Lifetime 11 segments. Uh, obviously, Terry and Max did their Lifetime 11 last week. It was uh, a feature on Everton's Instagram. They, they put out a little template for people to forward on to each other, and we did it, we did it on that. I don't know if anyone's uh, seen it on our Instagram stories, but me and Max did it, John, John did it as well. There was a few of us who, who did it last week, and um, I think... Uh, I was accused in the last video of you seeing between Terry and Max. I was accused of cheating because it was down as a lifetime eleven. Yeah, so yeah. I, I just took it as right. So there's players who've played in your lifetime. That's what I took it as. But apparently, it has to be players you've seen. So I couldn't. So have... we're looking like from 2000 onwards, really, yeah, aren't we? Exactly, Instead of 1994, yeah. 97. Yeah. So yeah, Ben's born in 94. I was born in 97. So he's got a couple of years on me. But yeah, I couldn't include people like Neville Southall. I put in. <coughs> I put Dave Watson in there. But no. I was disallowed those players because uh, obviously I have I, th- I don't remember them playing. So I'm gonna have to abide by the rules this time and change my team a little bit. So uh, yeah, we'll go through both of our teams uh, position by position, just to run through and see uh, whether our teams differ in any way. I'm sure they will. My team's quite attacking, and I, I'm I've not thought Man, of or anything whatsoever. <laughs> just stuck the best players in there, and whatever happens happens. Obviously, uh, defenders. Um, so yeah, goalkeepers we'll start with. Who have you got in goal to start with? Uh, there's only one. She that we can't have Neville Southall. There's only one contender, really. Nigel Martin. Really, yeah. Best than Tim Howard. Oh, don't tell me you've put Tim Howard. <laughs> Please, I was considering no. it. I was debating no, it. Obviously. Tim Howard was another very overrated goalkeeper, I think. He was okay, but there's not a lot between the like. I'd probably have Jordan Pickford ahead of Tim Howard, I really would. Because really? I wasn't always a fan of Tim Howard, especially towards the latter part of his Everton career. I felt... From distance, he was useless. For every every 20, 30-yard shot that went near him, he just stood still. And I'll be honest with you, I've never quite forgiven him for the FA Cup final Lampard shot. Shocking that. Mm-hmm. I don't know how he didn't save it. Yeah. So, Nigel Martin, the head and shoulders. And he was at the end of his career, really. I'd say Jordan Pickford, if anything, if I was pushed for second place. But not Tim Howard for me, personally. What about you? Yeah, I, I couldn't really remember much of... <laughs> Martin, obviously, I think he left in 2000, was it? 2006, he left. Yeah, so, um, obviously, I was, how old was I then? About nine. Uh, I do remember Nigel Martin playing in goal, but my best memories of Everton goalkeeper, vivid memories are Tim Howard, so I probably would have to go with him um, oh, wow. goal, because I don't remember enough of Nigel Martin. Oh, that's fair enough, then. If you take Martin out the equation, there's not a lot to pick from, really, is there? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Howard had that spot there. I go a few years and nothing since has ever came near. So I wouldn't pick someone like Joel uh, or so, so, like someone like that. So it would have to go to Tim Howard, unfortunately, because I don't remember enough of uh, Nigel Martin. But I hear that he was a great. And I do remember, I've, I've, like, I went the match when he was in goal. Like, I started going to match. See, I'd count that then. Yeah. And, you know, based on the the rules that we've been uh, bestowed, <laughs> that's been bestowed upon us, I would I would let you have him, but that's, yeah, you know what I mean? I'd have him, but like, it's kind of like, do you remember him? Have you been to see him? Because that differs for me, because I don't remember my first match. I know my first match was, because I look back, it was, uh, I've forgotten it now, but uh, it was it was 2003-04, against Wolves it was, 2-1 win, I think, against Wolves, um, and I, I, I remember bits of it, but I don't remember how the players played, for example, things like that, because I was about four years old, um, so or five, so I don't remember much of that at all. Like so, mm. uh, so yeah, it's a bit of a grey area. Like, but well, I was... just remember, I just remember Nigel Martin uh, that season, two thousand three or four. It was actually, yeah, we played Liverpool at Anfield and we drew nil nil, and he just completely kept us in the game, completely kept us in the game because we were useless that season. We finished seventeenth in the league, and he kept us. And he made, I don't know, if it was someone like Jamie Carragher had like a deflected shot from about forty yards out or something. And Nigel Martin sort of died it and saved it by sort of half volleying it with his foot. And I just remember thinking back to that and thinking, wow, what, what, what a saving to keep. You know, I think that's what we genuinely are missing now. And so, I, you know, I'm not a massive critic of Jordan Pickford. I don't dislike him that much. I think he's a decent goalkeeper. But it's been a long, long time um, since I've seen a goalkeeper keep us in a game like that like that's the reason why I'm a little bit more critical of Tim Howard because I can never remember a game when we've gone away to the likes of your Chelsea's your Liverpool's your Arsenal's that were big at the time and like you've 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 kept a clean sheet and you've like wow he really dug us out of that day with Nigel Martin 
you know, in a poor side, managed to get us a point away to likes of Anfield and things like that. And you know, it, that, it, so those kind of performances for me equate to Nigel Martin get the number one shirt. But uh, I think, you know, I accept your arguments if you've not really seen him play that much. But I think that's. Uh, I'm surprised there's not Nigel Martin in the team. But I think the fullbacks, which I'm sure we're going to next, will be the easiest, most cut and dry part of the entire show. Well, let's go straight into it. Seamus Coleman and Leighton Baines. Yeah, there's no need for discussion, really, is yeah. it? Leighton Baines is probably the best player, give or take Romelu Lukaku in the Premier League era for Everton for me. You know, other than, you know, an outstanding Ashley Cole, who maybe could defend a little bit better. He's for me the best left back in the Premier League era as well. You know, uh, Seamus Coleman, equally so, not quite as technically good as Leighton Baines was, but certainly had uh, the engine in him. And I'd say actually for two or three years, from when Moyes left the club and Martin is his first couple of seasons, they were probably, you know, the best full-back pair in Europe or one of them because they were just so good. I mean, Leighton Baines was the left-back for England, obviously Coleman, captain of Ireland. And uh, I'm a little disappointed really that Coleman hasn't had the longevity that Leighton Baines has had. I've got to be honest with that. You know, it's a shame what happened with Coleman's injury. Leighton Baines didn't have that to contend with. But, you know, it seems to me Seamus Coleman's career is a lot shorter than Leighton Baines, he's probably got five years of Seamus Coleman at the absolute peak of his powers, but now he's really on the climb. With Leighton Baines now, would probably still do a decent job for most Premier League teams. And he's into what is God will that now be? This one coming up now be something like his fourteenth consecutive season at Everton, which is absolute madness. Really. So there's no there's no point really debating on any of those positions because I don't think there's anyone who comes remotely close to them at no. all for me. Yeah, I wish Seamus Coleman would have. Obviously, stay there as best for longer. I think that injury really did knock him, unfortunately. And I, I, I genuinely love the man. I think he's amazing. Um, yeah. and I think his passion still uh, gets him to that level to be a decent um, Premier League fullback still to this day. But that injury, oh my God, I was so angry at the time. I still hate the guts of Neil Taylor for doing that, that, that challenge. Like, I'm sure he never meant it, but like, it was just an absolute horror challenge. And I was, him, wasn't it? It wasn't even for Everton. No, yeah, it was for Ireland. Obviously, I was, I was nearly crying at the time when I seen it happen because obviously yeah. I love James Coleman so much and at his peak he was unbelievable. And um, it's it well, look, he's still having a team. He's he's a good um, leader. leader. And he's shown that during this during this time of coronavirus outbreak as well. He's been a good leader for the players. Um, I was uh, like say, saying stuff about uh, advising them to take pay cuts and things like that. And he's he's led the discussions yeah. and he's done really well keeping um, between the club and the players a uh, good communication. So. Famous, absolute Everton legend, both of them to be for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. So um, they're obviously undebated, um, unanimous fullbacks. So I'd, we'll, we'll go for centre backs. Who have you got a centre back? <laughs> right, I think there's one we'll both agree on, and the other one might be open to debate. So obviously, I'm assuming you've got Phil Jagiel for similar reasons yeah. to the last two names you mentioned in Baines and Coleman. Yeah, yeah, I've got two Jags. Yeah, right. <clears throat> so you've got Jagiel. Now I probably. You know, this one, it might cause a lot of debate because of how we actually feel about the lab, but I've actually on the Julian Lescott. Oh, yeah? I have because uh, I'm guessing you might have gone for this, Dan. Yeah, I've gone for John Stones at his peak, John's, to be honest. Oh, OK, we'll have a debate about that then. Yeah. But Because he wasn't even in the thinking for me, John Stones, I, I, I don't think. But Lescott for me because, obviously, the way he left the club and his attitude at times, etc., so we can go into to look how it's going to come home. But, you know, actual... I'm doing this ability-wise. Actual ability-wise, Lescott and Jack Elka were the best pairing I've seen at Everton. Yeah. You know, between, i say, the peak of my Everton sport and life <clears throat> was until sort of 2006, 2009, which culminated in the FA Cup final. You know, that was the side that was, you know, Jolien Lescott and Phil Jack Elka for the majority of it. You know, 7 8 I still don't know how we didn't win anything that year. I really don't, or qualified Champions League, I really don't, because that squad we had that year was... Was fantastic. That was the best squad that we've had in the Premier League era for me, hundred percent. And um, Lescott and Jack Elka were a main part of that. You know, it took Jack Elka a while, a little bit like Baines, to sort of bed his way into the pit, in, bed his way into the team at the time. But regardless of how he left, I'm talking about him as a footballer, not a human being. So Joey Lescott, for me, ability wise, completely eclipses Sylvan Distan. Sylvan Distan was a good, solid player with his own attributes. You know, he was probably a yard quicker than Lescott. But the relationship and the partnership between Lescott and Jagielka 
I think with those two full-backs flying down the flanks either side of them would be as good as we can get in my lifetime. And probably the Premier League era, give or take Dave Watson, to be fair. So I'm quite happy with that. I'm, I'm interested to hear what you're going to say about John Stones because I didn't consider John Stones at all because I just don't think he was that good at Evan. I, re- I really didn't. I think he was good, but he was young and he was English. He wasn't a 27, 28-year-old player who was on the top of his game. He was a young player coming through. And it was only there for really at the top of his game for about 18 months. And in that time, I think we finished 11th twice. Mm. And we conceded a lot of silly goals. And I think the ability he had on the ball in comparison to the other players that we've seen playing that position before, maybe glossed over and made him look a bit better than he actually was. So I'm happy for you to debate that response, to respond yeah, to that. I honestly think he was... For, the, for a short period of time, he was amazing. And I, I put him when he was at his best. I would put him up there with some of the best in Europe, to be honest. And really? Yeah, yeah, I think he was unbelievable. And that's, I don't think, I, I think we got an absolute, um, I thought 50 million from City. I don't think he was worth 50 million. But no, for the second, obviously, Jags was, was a shoe in for me. But for that second spot, I've been debating that. Uh, even up to today, I was thinking last night when I was thinking through the video, who to go for? And it was between this time. Um, Lescott as well wasn't me thinking and Stones but thinking between the three of them John Stones had something else he was fast he, he had that last test challenge he was comfortable on the ball and now he did have a mistake in him Cruyff turns in the box things like that He's, but he was just that. that's what made me love him in a way the, the, the fact he was so ballsy and he would do Cruyff turns in the box and he would because he, he just the ability he could have and it's a shame that he does. He has made a, quite a lot of mistakes at his leading to goals for Man City and things like that. Because if he could get that out of his game, he would be unbelievable. Like one of the one I'd of the. I'd have him back still. Don't get me wrong. I just yeah. think I'd have Julie, Prime Julian Lescott back before him. To be honest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was I was very close to picking Lescott to be honest, but just the personality that Stones had, I think, puts me puts puts him above for me. Um, because I don't think you could see anyone else d- d- doing things that Stones did, and he was like at the top of his game, just. Just uh, last this challenge as well. He, some of those he made are just I've, I've not seen many better at Everton for, for, from some of the stuff he was doing. <laughs> See, Lescott for me, Lescott scored goals. Yeah, yeah. You know, Lescott as well. I think he scored about eighteen goals over two and a half seasons. You know what I mean? It was he scored ten goals in one season in oh seven oh eight. You know, without them being free kicks and penalties either. You know, was Jolie Lescott was a threat in both boxes, and that's. Yeah. That is really a rarity these days. And I don't think, you know, those extra 10 goals a season now, imagine what they could do for us in that kind of position. You know, Funes Mori was similar, but Funes Mori wasn't quite as equipped for the Premier League as Jolene Lescott was. But I like the fact that they were both, that he's left footed as well. I like a right sided and a left sided central defence partnership. Um, and that's why it was between distant and Lescott for me, Stones wasn't wasn't making the cut for me. But Lescott, because he added that goal set as well. Well, okay. He's a defender first and foremost, but it's another string to his bow. Yeah, that's true. I had decided in my head on Lescott last night. I like, I was kind of thinking, yeah, it's going to be Lescott. But then I was thinking about it again this morning, just thinking John Stones are the best, and just thinking I, I can't, I can't. And I know Max put him in his team as well. It'd be probably more interesting to have a debate with Max involved because he he'd die for John Stones. Like he's proper proper passionate about John Stones. Like, but so that that would be an interesting one. We'll have to get him involved as well. See what he thinks. Um, because I, I think he was great, but Max would honestly, he he, he loves the bones of John, John Stone. So, yeah, yeah. Um, but we'll move <coughs> into midfield. Um, I've gone through a three in midfield, which is quite oh, attacking. But, I've gone 4-4-2, four, uh, four, classic. 4-4-2, four, four, yeah. Who have you got in your midfield, then? OK. Um, <clears throat> I've, I've, on balance, my team looks a bit lopsided. It doesn't look like it probably work as practically as it would on paper. But Because my midfield, too, is because... What I've done is I've gone 4 4 2 and I haven't classed Tim Cale as a striker. So I've put him in central midfield. Tim Cale, first name on the team sheet, 100% an Everton legend in my eyes. Yeah. You know, probably not ability wise, the best player I've seen. Like I said, I've mentioned Lake Baines, but passion wise, I think if there's one player from this era I could bring back now for this for this current Everton side, it would be Tim Cale because I love the bones of the man and he loves the bones of Everton. And that's what more do you want, you know? It'd be great to see him come back as a manager one day, in my opinion, because he's doing his coaching badges and he's doing them, <clears throat> you know, what the club he loves. So I've gone for Tim Cahill and probably, in his part, probably the best footballing 
midfielder I've seen at Everton, which is Mikel Arteta. Obviously, another bit one like Lescott Weir, so there's a bit of a sour taste when he left, especially when he's come back now as being a manager. I think there's been a bit bit of um, animosity both ways, really, for the player. But for, for me, those two represent, on their own, Arteta and Kate represent an era where I was most at my happiest watching Everton Football Club, that era that I've mentioned you know, that was they were the poster boys for me for that 07, 08, 08, 09 sort of run. And, you know, even though 06, 07 as well, sorry. You know, they were the poster boys for that era where we re- it was criminal that we didn't come away from that with a, with a trophy, a League Cup or an FA Cup or even the Champions League spot because we were good enough and those two players were good enough. And the fact that they were such close friends on and off the pitch, for me, that was... They were just like the pinnacle of that era and the poster boys. So I, I'd be comfortable enough letting them play in midfield together, to be honest. So my favourite player of all time, Tim Cahill, and probably one of the best players I've seen at a football club in Mikel Arteta as, OK, maybe a little bit of a lightweight sense on midfield, but, you know, there's plenty of steel at the back there to compensate. Yeah, I've gone for those two as well. Uh, oh, yeah, OK. Three, but uh, it was sad last night. I don't know if you watched the Everett Premier last night, that 3-0 win over Arsenal when he came back to Goodison. And he was a proper little—I don't want to swear, but he was—he was a—he was, was a little rat. Yeah, I say that he was—he was proper nipping at everyone. We were giving a back to be fair. Steve Naismith gave him one. Uh, Ross Barkley pushed him. Uh, give him a bit of a shove as well. Um, obviously, it was—it was on bad terms, and he was getting booed by a lot majority. I'd say of it, maybe quite a lot of Everton fans at least. Um, and it was—it was sad to see. And then Baines arguing with him as well, even after the match. Kind of trying to settle it after it was it was sad because he was up there with obviously I agree with you I think he was ability wise I put him above Bain's ability wise the best player I've seen play for Everton okay um and it was just sad to see him come back and not get the respect and I think that came from him as well because he was he was he seemed like he was doing it on purpose he was nipping at people he was just another player I think who left and thought he was bigger than the club yeah <coughs> mm, yeah which is unfortunate you know he was sort of. I'm getting off this ship because it's gonna sink, kind of thing, yeah. you know. Mm. And now he's in his in his um in his high castle with Man City, uh, which is a shame. Obviously, he's, he's got with he's Arsenal got now, the, isn't he? The, yeah, he, yeah, he was with Arsenal. He looked like he picked Arsenal over Everton because he was like, "I'm better than he Everton." He took a pay cut, didn't he? Yeah, mm. which is, which is... <coughs> he took a pay cut to go to Arsenal. Obviously, now him being the manager there. Yeah, yeah, obviously. It's, uh, it's going to be quite a, it could be quite fruity kind of a situation to see what happens, you know, and how yeah. nasty it gets on the sidelines when he comes to Goodison. Yeah, with Ancelotti, it obviously could have been different. Obviously, we've seen them play each other with um, Ancelotti could have gone to Arsenal, Arteta comes to, could have come to Everton. But no, I do agree with you. I think he, he thought he was bigger than the club, unfortunately. Um, and he made his name here. He did completely make his name here because he was pretty much... He's just a nomadic back. player before, then go yeah. from league to league, club to club, and he found his home at Everton. Yeah, I was watching the interview with him last night. I think it was called the big interview he did in 2018 with Everton, um, Everton with Darren Griffiths, I think it was. Um, and he, he he sat down. He said, like before I came to Everton, I was having a really bad time, uh, and Everton came and just gave me the best days of my career, and the, the fans loved him. So it was such a shame our ended. But yeah, um, do you think it was uh, criminal that we only yeah. got 10 million pounds from? Yeah. You know, because he, he still had a lot of years left on the contract. Yeah, you know, yeah. Only 12 months before I signed him, a bumper five-year contract. How yeah. come we only got £10 million for Arteta, mm. when you think about it? I think he'd been there so long, and it was kind of like... He wasn't old. He well, no, he was, I think he was born in 82, so that would have made yeah. him what? Okay, yeah, it would have made him probably about 29. But, mm. you know, for such a key player, how come we, we sold him so... I always wondered that. I yeah. think the club was in a bit more financial difficulty than they let on, to be honest. Because mm. that was a really strange fee. Especially, you know, you think of last-minute transfer deadline day signings. Mm. We didn't exactly rip them off, did we? We give them give them a player for nothing, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is <coughs> unfortunate. It's one of them that just goes on deadline day. Like, everyone was thinking the club kind of panicked at the time. He just, he just let him go. And everyone was like, what have you done? You've let, you've let Arteta go. Obviously, the way he was before that. But it was just a shock at the time. And everyone... Drenthren, who we mentioned earlier. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. A lot of people, when you when when asked, a lot of Evertonians I've seen on Twitter of saying uh, which which player upset you the most when they left the club, as well as uh, there's a, there's obviously a few up there, but Arteta is up there for a lot of Everton fans. Lescott uh, for me, hundred percent. Lescott, yeah, obviously uh, Ferguson 
the Mafia isn't up there as well for a lot of people, but Arteta is definitely up there with the people who were upset uh, the most out of all Everton players um, when they left the club. But yeah, uh, we've both gone for them too. Um, I've gone for the three in midfield, which is weird, right? Because obviously okay. when you go for a four-three-three, you normally play three central midfielders. Well, well I'm, yeah. uh, yeah, I'm interested to see how you fit in Pinar into this. I'm assuming Pinar's in there. P- he's not. He's, he's, he's in there as a midfielder, which is weird. <coughs> as a centre mid. Not as a centre mid. I think I've got one centre mid. You've got like a, a, like a right mid, one centre mid and a left wing. Left it's wing. a strange formation. It's not a formation that I'd actually play with. I've just stuck players in there who are like... I think my team's definitely going to beat your team then if you play yeah. with each other. Because I've got... I rely on good, solid structure and flair. You know what I mean? <laughs> I've just put players in there who I think... But I've got Pina. Good. I've got Pina as well. But, you know, yeah. I've got him in a 4 4 two. Who's your other midfielder then? I'm going to surprise you. With my right side in midfield, because probably someone about you haven't even considered. I've actually gone for Landon Donovan. Oof! Because you know what? He wasn't <laughs> at the club very long, two short loan spells. But again, I'm basing this on the best I've seen, yeah. and ability wise, he was. Yeah. You know, he's one of the very rare players. You know, we've, we, we've all discussed and wondered in the past have any players actually been better the second time they've come to Everton Football Club after leaving and coming back? And universally, the answer is normally no. But with Donovan, there was no difference. It was seamless. It's like he came on loan twice from a completely different way of life and play in America. And he just it was like a duck to water. And he played, he just went, no, you know, no messing around coming off the bench in his first game. He's then back in, straight in the teams, playing every game while he was there, consistent as ever. And he was just, he was, again, the reason I think we lost quite a lot. Um, in the years preceding the 9 Cup finals because we didn't quite get the recruitment right and I think one of the main ones was not getting him back at a parent deal. I know it was difficult because of the relationship we had with LA Galaxy at the time a sort of you know, gentleman's agreement to say that we wouldn't go back and try and poach him which was understandable but even after the second time for me Landon Donovan I just it was such a shame we didn't get him for longer than we did because we haven't had a right wing get as good as him since you know, we've had we've we've had the likes of the your morale asses. You've had your likes of, you know, Aaron Lennon's players like that who've come in and done okay at times. But you know, for just ability and for really what ifs for me, Landon Donovan, you know, he still loves the club to this day. It was it was a real shame we didn't get to see more of him. And again, in in my sort of feeling of this four four two, it's quite a lightweight midfield four, but all of those players I've got a huge, huge work rate stats, I'd say. You know, your P9 and your Donovans will get back and help out your Colemans and your Baines as well. They attack forward. So that's sort of in me. That's the method in me madness. And for me, Landon Donovan, you know, if he's listening to this, which of course he will be, you know, thanks very much for your contribution. Shame we couldn't see more of you. Yeah, you never know. You might be. We've got a, a lot of uh, American listeners, thanks to Big Jerry, uh, as wonderful host. And so you never know. You, you might. might... <coughs> Appreciate that one. Um, but yeah, Landon Donovan. That's an outside choice, but to be honest, it does make sense. It's, it, I didn't see anyone uh, when we were doing this on the, on the Instagram challenge put him in there, but it does make sense because in terms yeah. of quality, he's got to be up there with the, some of the best we've seen. Uh, one of the ones that obviously I haven't chosen a right midfielder because I don't think anyone was up there, but um, one of the reasons, the lack of options. But John put... Um, Richarlison in there in his lifetime 11 you see that's not his best position on the right yeah. wing for me. That, that's not utilised I thought of Richarlison but that's not utilising him for me in his best position in that in, in a all time sort of 11 you can't play players out of position that that was my thinking behind that anyway yeah as well what, what one as well we haven't, we haven't um, touched on yet is Kanchelskis would he come into your thinking do you remember him playing for Everton or I well, know. no, he, no, he left. I think he left in about ninety seven, didn't he? Or ninety yeah. seven, like so. No, yeah. no chance. Yeah, you know, if the rules would have been different, he'd have gone straight into the team, obviously in that position. But yeah. we know we've had to have seen them live, and I didn't go to my first ever game till two thousand two. Mm. Uh, two thousand two oh three, it was. I think it was two thousand three, April. Nil nil draw against West Ham. Actually, that. Yeah. Um, no, I can't put uh, Kinchelskis in mm. for that reason. But he would have been. Yeah, you know, he was. Quality quality player, unfortunately, we haven't seen, but obviously, we have a little bit. Jordan, this quarantine with no football, we've watched all football matches and seen a little bit of Kanchelskis, which is just great. Obviously, um, quality player, but moving on to the strikers, uh, the crucial bit. I've got three strikers, like not even wingers, I've just got three strikers because I think uh, there's three absolute like quality. We've seen some bang average uh, strikers, it's so worse like, than that, mate. Yeah, so you've seen some actually 
shocking strikers to be fair during, during the time but I've seen three absolutely quality ones but okay. uh, well, I talk about yours first who have you got up front well, be, well obviously we've got Lukaku that, that's again another name that was here to put on the team so you've got him haven't you yeah I've got him yeah Yeah. Uh, my other one is actually Richarlison oh yeah because yeah, I do think he's best used as a striker and yeah. in my opinion he 100% is um, yeah he's the first player for me Richarlison in a long time, really, since your Arteta's, etc., that I've genuinely been incredibly excited about. You know, when we bought him, I was excited because he was a young player, but obviously I was, you know, hesitant because of the fees involved and that. But he's turned out to me, he's the first player we've had in a lot, in quite a few years for me. He was that young and that good. You know, he, the, the, way, the sky really is his limit. He, he, I'm convinced he's going to be the first ever, £100 million pound Everton player. I really do. I, unfortunately, I think someone like a Barcelona will bid for him and he will go eventually. Hopefully, we might get another 12, 18 months out of him or two years. But he, he really is that good. You know, how long has it been since, you know, uh, your Everton strikers also have been Brazil's first choice or thereabout striker? So, for that reason, I can't leave the Charleston out. He was joint top scorer yet, uh, last season, having played majority, well, having played pretty much all of it on the wing. This season, he's been absolutely quality as well. Reminds me a bit of a new sort of refined new age version of Tim Kale, the way he pops up in the box with his uh, headers etc and just the overall toughness and work rate he's got considering he's a Brazilian striker who we know from experience that young Brazilian strikers like Joe etc can be quite temperamental mm. Rubinho's of the world that kind of thing but for me it's just a real just paying a bit of homage to who is currently Everton's best player I've no doubt in my mind about that Everton's best current player and the one player, I believe, at the club that will go on to greater things, unfortunately, than ever. Well, you know, they have to make a case for all the other players. I uh, do they're probably exactly where they need to be or deserve to be in their careers. But I do think that Charles, sooner or later, is going to be a Champions League footballer. And he's going to win plenty of honours. And for that reason, Richarlison's, uh gets the number nine shirt in yeah. my side because he's currently our best player, my current favourite player. And ability wise, a strike force of him and Romelu Lukaku would probably get you close to being at the very top of the league, wouldn't it? Now he'd probably be trying to uh, challenge for the title if you had them two up front. That's true, yeah. And he gets the club as well. It's kind of like, obviously with the club, uh, people have said it's lost its identity in the last few years, but Richarlison is one of the few players in that squad now, I'd say. He gets <coughs> properly gets the I club. I agree. He's, he's kind of like, I know um, Peter Reeve was doing a Q&A with Howard's way, uh, recently on Twitter, and he said if you could have one of the current Ev- current Everton squad in the 80s team, who would you pick? And he, he chose Richarlison. Yeah. And I honestly do think he'd fit in because those were a, a bunch of proper Evertonians who played for the shirt. And... But he's strong, he's rugged as well. I know he's been yeah. accused of like maybe rolling around a bit on the floor a bit much before Ancelotti and Ferguson got hold of him, might I add. Mm. But he's got a real toughness to his game for me. For a Brazilian player, it's strange to see. He's not your typical silky skilled rapid sort of diminutive player you know he's a big lad and he puts himself about yeah. and that's a real and that kind of work rate for such a young lad as well I don't think there's any complacency in him like mm. the Drenth as we've mentioned earlier on you know he really seems like a good lad with his head on with an head on his shoulders who okay unfortunately probably will like I've said go on to bigger and better things in Everton Football Club but yeah he would get in that 85 side he'd probably have been the star, one of the star players because you know, he, he's got everything desirable. You could put him in any Everton side, I'm convinced, throughout history, and he would be successful because you go back even to when they were successful in the 60s and you think, oh, he couldn't match it, mix it up. Then why couldn't he? Because he's strong enough and tough enough to do that and he's also skillful enough and that kind of rare breed of player to have. To, I, I honestly think he could play in any generation of Everton's top sides and that is another overwhelming reason like the ones you mentioned there with Peter Reid's comments why he's you know he's straight in that team she does no hesitation from me mm, yeah obviously he's, he's tried to get that aspect out of his game uh, out obviously spending a lot of time on the floor which he, he does to an extent still but I he think he stops since Ancelotti come in do you reckon yeah I've noticed that yeah Mm, he does it. In, he does it in a snide way as well though, to to get an advantage for his team. He's one of them snide players that you like. And Calvert Lewin's got that to him now as well. He's kind of yeah. one of those players who just it, it, 
he'll do so, he'll bend the rules for his team, and we haven't seen enough of that recently. Being fight for, your, fight for the badge, yeah, exactly. Which is a uh, which is quality. I've not included them in my team because I do think we we've got we've, we've seen absolute quality for him, but I do think we've got our is best to look forward to. Um, still, so that's why I've not included them. But I had to include three Everton strikers because uh, the, the unbelievable. Obviously, Lukaku's in there. We've touched on unstoppable at his best. Wayne Rooney, uh, I had to include as well because Wayne even, Rooney, Wayne Rooney, yeah. Uh, even even though he wasn't at his best. Um, I was say, did you see him play? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Left did, in 2004, yeah. though, didn't yeah, he? Only seven. Exactly. So I, I I remember him as well though. So it was kind of like. He was obviously had his best years at Man United, but the talent he had, even as a 16 year old, was absolutely unbelievable when he came on the scene and scored that banger against Arsenal. He was, in terms of quality, uh, up there with definitely the best I've seen um, at Everton in my lifetime. And in terms of the best, one of the, some of the, one of the best players I've seen in my lifetime, and I've seen the likes of obviously Messi as well. So he's uh, the best best English player. Yeah. Probably in history for me, he's the best Premier League, uh, best English Gazza, Premier League he? player. Or, yeah, Sorry? he said Rooney himself says Gaz is the best English player in history. But fair enough. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. I've, I mean, I'm not seeing enough for Gakpo, but certainly in the generations where you've seen the likes of your Scholes, as, you know, your Lampard, your Gerrard, that kind mm. of way. Wayne Rooney for me was better than all of them. Yeah, throughout yeah. his career, and you know, he's United's all time leading goal scorer and England's all time leading goal scorer. What more can you ask from? You know, because there was a lot of pressure on him when he took yeah. that move to Man United. It could have gone really badly for him. He could have sounds negative as never told him, but he could have ended up just back at Everton on loan, couldn't he? Yeah, but he didn't. Yeah. He took it on, and yeah, for me, he's uh, the best England player in our generation. Uh, give or take Paul Scholes for me. So it's uh, have you actually gone for Rooney in your team? Yeah, yeah, he's up there. So you've gone. It? You've got your Rooney, Lukaku, Duncan Ferguson. I had to. I had to include them. Yeah, absolutely. Like I know he was injured a lot of the time, and I was suspended a lot of the time, and now he left and he came back, but. It wasn't the best of his career when you weren't watching Everton, though. Well, you because know, when you've well, seen him, Duncan Ferguson was finished. You know, as, as much as we all like his attitude, that Duncan Ferguson, when he came back to the club second time round, was finished. Really, he didn't you know? Him, but that's that, your opinion, mate. You know what I mean? Still, though, team, I but... think he was still, he was still that handful. It, like, it was still impossible to defend against him. Now he, his best years were behind them, but I do remember him just being an absolute handful and centre-backs couldn't deal with him because of his height and because he still put himself about and now he, his best years were behind them, but he still had that fight about him. He still bullied defenders and now he was he was quite frail in those late, later years and I was unfortunate not to see his years obviously winning the FA Cup in 95 with the team and uh, yeah. the late 90s when he was when he was at his best, but even, even in those later years, he was just, he was just a handful of defenders and the fight, the fight he had um, I have to include him in the team just because I've seen him play even if it wasn't at his best I have to include um, those three strikers because those are three of the best players I've seen play live so I have to, I have to include them I know formation doesn't make any sense but just based on just the get quality. the ball in the box I think your team's uh, exactly, strategy yeah. to get the ball yeah. in the box of Fergus and let him knock it down for Lukaku and Rooney that would be I imagine it would be quality I, I know problem I've got is no, when you lose the ball and you've yeah, got no, you know, no you've got Stephen Pienaar as your anchor man in midfield <laughs> yeah that's the thing with, with it, we'll mention we, one name we haven't mentioned who quite a lot of people did include in the team was Idrissa Gay so because he was he really he no was, Fellaini Fellaini I was play. if I had to put another central midfielder it would have been Marron Fellaini yeah. Idrissa Gay was a very solid signing for Everton and he was consistent but he lacked part of his games that I, you can't really count. Well, you know, he, he really lacked any kind of forward thinking, really. Although to the end of his Everton career, he actually improved that a little bit. He, he wasn't very good going forward. He didn't score enough goals for me as a central midfielder. He didn't create enough chances. And yeah, for that reason, it, it, Fellaini was the other name I was considering putting in the side, not just a game. But that's again, it's, it's a game of opinions, isn't it? And yeah, uh, yeah uh, Gareth Barry probably would have been exactly. ahead of him say, as well, yeah. to be fair, because I think Gareth Barry had a lot more about him in a creative sense. Yeah, yeah, he did. Obviously, their partnership was quite effective. I think it was Johnny put Barry and Gay together in in his um, in his team. To James McCarthy, and if it's yeah. on ability as well, last season in thirteen fourteen was unrivaled. Yeah, yeah. I just couldn't put James McCarthy in my Everton, all-time Everton team. I couldn't justify that, personally. No. I know he was really good. But, yeah, they t- they, the names you were on the fringes. But, I mean, to be fair, I could probably do with James McCarthy to shore up my midfield of 
Cahill. Could do with I both of them, mate, because as soon as you lose the ball, you're getting counted, mate. <laughs> exactly. I just have to camp in the half. We need to p- find a way of playing this game on Footy Manager. Like, put yeah. them in. You could probably do it somehow, you know. Because remember when Sky did a team of Gary Neville's against a team of Jamie Carragher's? You ever seen that? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, imagine that. Like, our classic teams against each other in, like, in a matchup. That'd be good, that, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah, it would. We'll, we'll see if we can make it happen, John. We'll, uh, we'll yeah. leave that in there for you to think about. So, 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 something to think about, definitely. So, that'd be quality. We've, we've, we've rabbited on here, but it's been an absolute quality segment, to be fair. I think we've, um, we've done really well. So, uh, let us know in the comments your... Uh, Everton 11 I'm sure there's a lot of people who disagree with mine and uh, I think Ben's is more solid don't mind what of a solid team no it, it, well, let us know what you think of Landon Do- Do- Donovan's inclusion as well because that, that's obviously um, one outside the box that I didn't think of and none, none of the lads on Instagram thought of either so uh, let us know what you think in the comments what is your best Everton lifetime 11 in the comments um, a really interesting thing to think about obviously in a time where we haven't got much else to think about in terms of current Everton action at the moment but yeah um let us know. I hope you liked the video. Follow us both on social media. As always, being a pleasure bringing the content to you. So subscribe to the Topic Blues to get more of it. And thanks a lot to Ben for joining me. It's been a pleasure. Cheers, mate. Thanks for having me. Nice one. Uh, thanks again. And join us next time on the Toffee Blues.